I came out of the cinema yesterday and Fabrice was there to ask, you know, reactions. And I was crying so hard, so I couldn't Aww. talk. And I said, I can't talk, Fabrice. I have to <laughs> really digest the whole thing. Aww. Because it broke my heart somehow, you know. I was completely emotional. My question, starting with you, Luke, when was the last time in the cinema you cried? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fountain. <laughs> I'm, I'm crying like, even, even the the worst American stupid comedy, I'm crying. I'm, 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 I'm terrible. I'm Does terrible. it get worse with age, or was it always like that? No, it was always like that. Yeah. I'm a really, I'm, I'm, yeah, always. Yeah. Caleb and you, are you a crier in movies? Do you remember when you cried last? I was very happy when I read the thing about Kurosawa, and he spoke about himself having to hide in the back of the cinema, him and his friend, because they were like children, crying and always the film, hiding it, you know, watching. And that made me feel much better about myself. So I think that answer is the question. <laughs> It's very Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> Could you please talk in the back? Sorry for that. It irritates me. Um, but you know that the whole crying thing, you know, I think it's healthy because th this is exactly what we want. And I was also, I mean, the way you sit, you smoke, <laughs> you owe the whole scene. And this is so powerful. Where do you take that from? Depends on which scene you're speaking of. And, to be honest, in all the scenes... Because Marlene, you know, gave me something for a few. And then no, but it, mostly in all the scenes, you know, especially when you talk to your psychiatrist, you know, um, because this man could be bitter. He oh, could I think be cynical. A, He's this not. was what Luke talked about, you know, after I read the script, was who this man was, that despite everything, yes. he was always still himself, and no one was really able to take that light out of him in this kind of way. Um, but I think he's very comfortable in his skin and he's grown into something that is very, doesn't mean that he's broken or doesn't mean that he's hurting or that he's angry at himself or anything like that. But I think there is a, a comfortability of, of, of who he is. And I think when he's confronted with um, Jojo's character in the film, it is a, a revealing of himself to her that he is very proud to show um, he has in also, some way. Yeah, he has also a big advantage uh, compared to her. He knows the ending. He knows, <laughs> he knows the ending. He knows where he's going. Uh, yeah. And she doesn't know. So he knows the end. Yeah, yeah. But you know that you could be bitter. You think if you have a childhood like that, if you grow up like that, even we sometimes with the whole world, you get cynical, you get, you know, like angry about things. And this is what I loved so much. It was so human, the power he had, you know. But he said in the film, he said, complaints are prey to the devil. That's exactly. There are so many people in life that have overcome things that, that show us, give, you know, um, are a testament to um, great difficulty and hell on earth and come through it and persevere in another way and become extraordinary in this light that they are able to show. Um, I find that more often sometimes than the other way around. I'm, I feel like I'm constantly meeting people that despite what has happened in their life, they have done something else with it and have chosen not to be a victim um, in that way because they want to live. There's still life to live, even if their legs have been taken or even if, you know, their family or community has been taken away from them. You know, the homeless, for example, you know, there's aspects of, of, of life that cannot be diminished you know, despite what what hell you find here on earth. But, but sometimes when you're bitter, it's because you reject your part of responsibility of yourself. You put it on the other one. Yes, it's easy, right? Yes. You uh, just make everybody else responsible yeah. for your own. And that's, yes. what, that's what makes you bitter. Yeah, yeah. You know, and for me, it's also this last picture when all the dogs were around him. 
that's my dream actually <laughs> you know like I always thought I want to spend one night with a pack of wolves you know to lay there he did for the film you did no I want to how was that ex tell it was great watching them eat chicken <laughs> You really slept with a pack? No, I didn't sleep with them. You know, I don't think I would have made it the next day. I don't think there would have been much of left of me. They're very sweet wolves, but they are wolves at the end of the day. And um, they don't let you forget that. You can be with them and you can be petting one and suddenly a sound or something and like an eagle, you know, and suddenly you're confronted with, right? <laughs> Right, any yeah. second you can take a different approach to what happens next. Um, but there is a great power in this as well. And um, But it, you, you have to say it's a, it's a bedroom with a huge window, so you spend the night with them. They're on the other side, you're with them. Yeah, you can feel them and smell yeah. them and not. Oh no, I was getting to touch them and having them on either side and hello. <laughs> Hello, all right, right, right. <laughs> but I think there is something in that that's probably in the film as well, that experience is probably something taken from from that that is in the film of uh, Douglas and something with Douglas that, you know, like the dogs, you know. <laughs> be careful. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you hurt one of his babies, it's not going to be good. Not good. But... For you, uh, Luke, what did you learn from dogs, you know, because I think what Caleb just said, like, if you spend, if you watch dogs, and I watch you all the time anyway, um, and you understand them, I have the feeling we gain so much with that. What did you learn? I'm impressed by the unconditional love they have. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do, you come back. The tail is moving, and they're happy to see you, and they lick you, and even if you you were mad to them, and then you scream at them, you come five minutes later, and they're just happy to see you all the time. And it's it's a philosophy, you know, almost. You, you know, I learned that from them. Is it healing? Yeah, in, in, in yeah. a way, yeah. The, the unconditional love is something re remarkable. Humans are not able to do that. No, we always judge, we always, you know, there comes a whole agenda always, you know. With we guard questions. ourselves, we keep ourselves safe, and therefore we have the knives out to everyone, just in case someone can, <laughs> you know, open us up in a bad way, you know. And dogs are not interested. You know, they... they yeah. You can have someone kind. that is beating their dog and the dog might still come up to them and, and when they come home from work they might still be happy, you know, to see them yeah. Yeah. as when I was messed up as that is. I have, I, have a, I have five kids and we have a dog. He's in the film, by the way. Yeah. Which one was it? <laughs> it's the first one when you have the kid in the cage, yeah. the one who's licking it, the brown one. Yeah. His name oh. is Snoop. <laughs> and Snoop it's now eight years, eight years old, but every time one of the child is sick in his room, the dog stays in the room all day without asking. He just yeah. come and sit. Do you have dogs? You live uh, on a farm in Texas, I No, think. I live in Los Angeles with oh. a yard about this big, and <laughs> so I, I don't have a dog because I don't have the room for a dog to be able to be a dog, and I don't like small spaces and the dog is confined to a small space but my parents dog Millie who's my dog um, she was staying with us recently and very much like Luke when my girlfriend was sick she would come in and and lay with her and I remember my girlfriend after she went that Millie went back to Texas to take care of two other dogs and she was sick again and this dog also did the same thing and laid by her and I think Katia felt as if she'd sucked it up away from her and took it on herself or something. Wow. But dogs are incredible. Yeah, because also what I liked... But animals are incredible. Animals, in, oh, I, I completely agree. Film just happens to be about... <laughs> <laughs>
And if you turn dog around when the boy is in the cage, right. God, right? But then it's dog. And this is exactly, it's so nice to play with that. You yeah. know? Name of dog and dogman. Yes. Name of God and dogman. Yeah. When you had the premiere last night and people were cheering and standing up, uh, six, seven minutes standing ovations. Eight, nine, ten. Oh, ten, whatever. <laughs> It's a long one. Don't story. minimize it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> um, how is that for you guys? Um, of course, it's beautiful, but is it also like because you brought your baby to the world? What feeling is that? It, it's you're still on under anesthetic. <laughs> like it takes me a while. Like I, I could, I don't hear the clap. There's no sound. You know, I just see the faces, the smile. And it takes a while to understand what's going on, you know. You don't, you, because you don't, you don't know. You know, I'm gonna tell you a story. Like 25 years ago, I did this premiere with a, a, a movie I've done called uh, uh, Leon, and it was in Paris. 500 people in the room. End of the movie, end of the credits. People stand up and leave. There's not one person who applaud at all. They just leave and you're in shock, you don't understand. You Nothing? <laughs> no, n nothing at all. So on the reverse now, when your people are close, you, you almost don't hear right away. You, you need to process. We were much more happy like an hour after. <laughs> then you watching, watching the image on yes. the news and say, oh my God, looks amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but, How was it for you? Yeah. I read also you had braids and you opened your hair or something. Oh, I was just confined to a look. <laughs> and I was in a lot of uh, tension suddenly and a bit nervous, you know, and I'm not good with that many eyes on me. <laughs> <laughs> Is it easy for you, Caleb, to watch yourself in a movie? Or are you somebody who always thinks, oh, I could have done it like this and that? How? easy is it for you to watch yourself? It's a real pleasure to be taken away from it sometimes in, in, in a film. And last night there were moments when I get taken away with it and I can watch it from this space and this is an amazing time. <laughs> and then you're confronted with another moment where you, was that, uh, was that a lie or is that the truth? And you remember the day of shooting, you, you remember the things that were happening and it's, it feels like a week ago or something um, while you're watching it. It's, it's a very unusual experience and kind of checking what could you have done better, what could you, what, uh, just uh, it's analyzing and then not analyzing sometimes at the same time and it's a real joy when you're not analyzing <laughs> and you get caught up in it. Um, but I'm getting better at, at being able to watch <laughs> stuff I mean. <laughs> and not uh, beat myself up too much because I'm very critical and I want it to be the best. I, I want it always. It and it was. I <laughs> loved you in that. I thought you're a pretty man and a pretty woman. You were very beautiful, good legs and everything. I thought, wow. <laughs> she, she, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing how yeah. he transformed himself. Yeah. Uh, it was good when we took... Um, when we went to uh, the spa before we started, Luke took me for two weeks to lose a bit more weight at, uh, at a water spa, what do you call it? Anyways, and I remember a few times, you know, with the robe on, you know, and excuse me, ma'am. Oh, no problem, you know, and I thought, okay, something's happening, it's good, you know. <laughs> Someone else thinking the limp is real and, you know, and these kinds of things and, and the way people act with you when they think you've got a disability or something, they all feed into, well. In Paris, we stay in a, in a nice hotel and he, he rent a, a, a wheelchair to, you know, just to feel, go in Paris and see how people react. And the people were at the hotel, they were very kind and <laughs> sometimes they come and say, Sorry, but what, what, your friend, what kind of like sickness? Because sometimes he's a wheelchair and sometimes he's, he's walking. 
And I say, no, he's, he's an actor, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all the time, no, 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 I'm acting in the film, no, no, no problem, don't mind me, don't pull my chair, it's okay, you know.